Hi everybody, my name's Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Yah. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour channel, and we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us and for being part of the little ecclesia that we are having here. It is a uh, sun day on the uh, Gregorian calendar. It is month nine on our creator's calendar. That means it is the 24th day of his, his as in Yah's, calendar. It is the 18th day on the Gregorian Babylonian Satanic calendar. And how are you guys doing? Good. Good. How's everyone? Jade, you're a little tired? No, I'm almost Holding on all night or last night, huh? Yeah. Working some stuff? Yep. Eli, how you doing? Good. How's your arm? Uh, still hurts. It's almost better, I think. Almost, but not quite? Mm -hmm. Can't put any kind of pressure on it? Nope. But it still hurts? Is it getting inflamed at all? I don't think so. No. Kate, how you doing? Good. All right. Well, let us continue in. Um, I don't have anything too exciting today. Actually, let's go over real quick. Anyone want to take a guess at Bible count? I'm I don't have it pulled up here. Nobody can do it. Kate, Bible count since the beginning of December. How many Bibles have we distributed? Uh, not we. I keep saying we. It's not we. It has nothing to do with we. It has. How many Bibles has Yahuwah distributed to his people? Uh, 314. 314 is Cade's count. Jade? 320. 320? 326. 326. Okay, so we are officially, there's two counts, 295 and 24. So those are 9, 9, 10, 11, 319. 319. So we have 319 well. scriptures. And then um, the book of, of Enoch is, is actually the third place, and the book of Yasher is, is fourth place. But the book of Enoch is actually the, it's the wrong one. The one that we got up there was one that uh, the Hallelujah Scriptures Grifters actually released like years and years and years ago. And then they, they got rid of, but they got rid of for a reason because it was all completely jacked up. So our book collection is almost here. Pretty much everything that comes from the Hallelujah Scriptures we will have and we will get that scanned up. The very first thing that we will be doing um, this week is getting the Hallelujah Scriptures in Spanish scanned. And that out for everybody. And as much as I'm thinking that is, or as much as I am hoping that is a good translation, I don't believe it is a very good translation because the one guy that had been translating it for the Hallelujah Scriptures that they they left the guy homeless in a ditch and then they had they they basically uh, ruined his life and he had been working there for 13 years for these people and um, he had been translating the Hallelujah Scriptures for over. 10 years and so that as far as the spanish version goes so when they left him in the ditch and kicked him to the curb then he they, they what they say is that uh they had to finish this up by themselves and so this is probably going to be a slaughter of a translation but we will look at it and we will provide it for everybody and um this is all part of stopping the grift which will um essentially you know take the you know the leash off of the word of yah that they are holding against everybody all right, so here we are, gentlemen. We are in Lucas. We are in the 23rd chapter of Lucas. And uh, let us begin. Okay, and the entire assembly of them, having risen up, led him to Pilatus and began to accuse him, saying, We found this one corrupting the nation and forbidding to pay taxes to Kaiser, saying that he himself is Mashiach, a sovereign. Okay, so we have a bunch of liars right out of the gate. And Pilatus asked him, saying, you are the sovereign of the Yahudim. And answering him, he said, you say it. And Pilatus said to the chief Kohen and to the crowd, I find no guilt in this man. But they were insisting, saying, he stirs up the people, teaching through all Yahuda, beginning from Galil unto this place. And when Pilatus heard of Galil, he asked if the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under the authority of Herodas, he sent him to Herodas, who was also in Jerusalem in those days. And seeing Yahushua, Yah Yah Herodas rejoiced greatly for a long time. He had wanted to see him because he had heard much about him and was anticipating to see some miracle done by him and was questioning him with many words, but he gave him no answer. And the chief Kohenim and the scribes stood accusing him intensely. And Herodas with his soldiers made light of him and mocked him, dressing him in a bright robe and sent him back to Pilatus. And on that day, Pilatus and Herodas became friends with each other. For before that, they had been at enmity with each other. That's a weird little detail to add in there. Yeah, yeah, it is. 
Well, and it's it's good things to have, right? We we don't know, and you know these guys are all like Roman leaders, and um, just like every politician and leaders, they're always at odds with each other, and you know they're all a bunch of liars at heart. Okay, thirteen, and Pilatus, having called to, called together the chief Kohen and the rulers of the people, said to them, um, "Okay, on fourteen, the verse fourteen has a little bit of a typo. You need to put a space, Miss Nicole." Between 14 and the word said. That's the only one I saw. So we're doing a little proofreading as we go as well, guys. Okay. Said to them, you brought this man to me as one who turns away the people. And look, I have examined him in your presence and found no guilt in this man regarding the charges which you make against him. And neither did Herodas. For I sent you back to him. And look, he has done not deserving death. Having disciplined him, then I shall release. For he had to release one to them at the festival. Okay, does your guys have a dash at the end of release? Yeah, yeah it's okay. a translation. And the same with bar Barabba? It's yep. like in parentheses. Yep. Okay. That's, so, a, that's a form of parentheses. That's a form of parentheses? That's yeah. a form of footnotes they say they don't use. So it. when they stole the uh, the ISR, then instead of them putting the, the they just changed yeah, things Yeah, you know how they say they don't use footnotes or anything made yeah. by man in like the beginning of their books? Uh, yeah, no, they just, I just, I learned that and they just put that there. When there's parentheses in the other Bible, they just put dashes there. Yeah, well, they couldn't use footnotes made by man because that would be obvious they stole everything, right? Because the man-made stuff would be the guys like um, uh, Bill Meyer and um, Wilhelm Wolfort. Those guy, guys were probably the guys that were doing those kind of notes or things of that nature. So yeah, hallelujah, scripture grifters. Go, guys. Okay. Um, for he had to release one of them at the festival. And they cried out all together saying, away with this one and release to us Baraba, who had been thrown into prison for a certain uprising made in the city and for murder. Okay, your parentheses that you had. Okay, so, yeah, so instead of parentheses, they just do the dash, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, I see how they do this. And let's continue on here. Um, 20, wishing to release Yahushua. Then Pilatus appealed to them again. But they were calling out, saying, Impale! Impale him! A bunch of murdering thugs. And he said to them the third time, Why? What evil has he done? And it says, Ho done. Yep, I okay. I have found no reason for death in him. Having disciplined him, then I shall release. And guys, as we're seeing these kind of typos, I'm really, really super sorry. The boss clan goes from chapter to chapter to chapter. And what you're seeing at the bottom wasn't real text like right before we did this right it was in a book format when you scan a book you literally have a copy of the book but you do not have the text so boss clan and those who are helping to participate are literally reading every jot and tittle of this and nicole blasts through this to the very best of her abilities and then we have two of my boys who now will read it and when we read it we start with capital a n d uh, like say, you know, it's like everything. You have to tell them every last thing. And so when we see these things, we're actually, we're doing two things at the same time. We're getting through this and we're also um, proofreading all of this stuff. Okay, let's go right here. Um, I have found a reason for death in him. Having disciplined him, then I shall release. But with loud voices, they insisted, asking for him to be impaled. And the voices of these men and of the chief Kohen were prevailing. And Pilatus pronounced sentence that what they asked should be done. And he released the one they asked for, who for uprising and murder had been thrown into prison, but he handed Yahushua over to their wants. And as they led him away, they laid hold of a certain man, Shimon, a Kir Kirinane. How do you guys... Siren. 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 Yep, who was coming from the field, and they put the stake on him to bear it behind Yahushua. And a great number of people were following him, and women who also were mourning and lamenting him. But Yahushua turning to them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For look, days are coming in which they shall say, Baruch are the barren, and wombs that have never bore, and the breasts which have never nursed. Then they, be, then they shall begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. Because if they do not do this to the green tree, what is, what is going to be done to the dry? And so what, what we're talking about for folks that do not know, we're talking about the assault on Jerusalem that is coming in 70 AD when literally you don't want to have kids, you don't want to have that kind of, I hate to say, baggage 
but under an assault where you're trying to flee for your life, um, having a kid, just, it's going to be far worse. And the people that got trapped in Jerusalem ended up eating their children. That, that was how bad the food was. And so um, it's it would, Messiah Yahushua was basically prophesying as he was getting ready to die, which is kind of crazy. Okay, so far, you know, when it said Yahushua was beaten and then released, right? Mm -hmm. I st we're beaten, beaten and released? Or he was beaten and then he, like, in the plot said he's going to release someone, right, right? Right, 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 right. So far, we haven't been to the Cat of Nine Tales. I don't know if it's in John. Do we know if that's biblical or not, the like Cat of Nine Tales? Uh, if it's biblical or not. Because remember, when someone gets disciplined in Israel, they are not getting, like, well, they're getting, not getting more than 40 stripes. Right. So we, I don't know if they're going to take the Cat of Nine Tales to Yahushua. Well, what do you mean? Why wouldn't they? These people are not Hebrews, right? Forty stripes does not apply to them. This was, these are only for the people of Yah, right? The Romans, they'll give you a thousand stripes. They'll, they'll whip you until you're dead, right? Until you have no skin left on your back. Um, so that, the, the, the laws, is that kind of what you're speaking of? Yeah, I'm asking uh, where the Canine Tales comes from. If, like that was actually, we know for a fact that he actually got hit with the Canine Tales. Uh, I would say he got beat. I mean, this, it doesn't give us any of the, the, I mean, we have other accounts of this, right? I never. Uh, so far as that, I think we're waiting until. Where do we John. get the cat of nine tails at? I don't know. That's what I'm waiting for. Maybe in John. I maybe I'll look through John. We'll find in John. Uh huh. Um, so where far, do we, we haven't heard. It. He was just. It just said he was disciplined or he was beaten. Yeah. Well, I mean, it wasn't this. He, he, here's the thing. He was beaten to a pulp. Right. Pilatus and Herodas were trying to release him. Right. Unless the people saw him destroyed or beaten to where he's humbled and where it, they feel better, the mob mentality would never, ever stop. So he was beaten well, like very hard, like to the point where, here, look, I just beat beat this guy up. Let's release him. There's nothing left of this guy, right? He could probably not even stand after he was done being beat. So no, I don't I don't have an answer for that. Maybe we'll, we'll figure this out. Brother Glenn will probably have some answers. So we, uh, we always get breakfast with Brother Glenn. He's always hanging out with us here. Another thing, uh, Yahushua just starts teaching in the middle of him, just carrying up his cross. He just turns around and just starts teaching. He's doing what he does best. Well, he wasn't teaching, right? The situation was the women were right there crying. And um, he was trying to console them, but he was also prophesying. As he was, after he was beaten, after he was on the road, right? He was already walking to Galgava. And so... He's still caring for them, even like... Through, yeah, like he's, absolutely. He's, he's still worrying about them, even though he's just on his way to death. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No, our Messiah was a very, very good person. Okay, 32. And two others also, evildoers, were led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Golgotha, they impaled him there and the evildoers, one on the right and the other on the left. And that was, I just, you don't even want to go down the road of being impaled. It's just a, it's a, it's a horrible way to begin a death. Okay. And Yahushua said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. And that uh, fulfilled like a prophecy somewhere in Psalms where it said like they are, they are like all. Where's the footnote on that again? It said uh, some early manuscripts did not include this. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it's in Psalms. I, th I think I remember that as well. But I don't remember where it's at. Okay. Um, and the people were standing looking on, and the rulers also were sneering, sneering with him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is Hamashiach, the chosen of Elohim. And the soldiers were mocking him too, coming and offering him vinegar, and saying, If you are, that's a mistake, if you are the sovereign of Yahudim, Yahudim, save yourself. All right, guys, we can never go through another reading unless we proofread this as a family again because we can never do this, is right? Is that a capital T or not, boys? 37? 37. That is not. If you are the sovereign of the, of the Yahudim, save yourself. So, guys, as we try to get these lessons out to you, there is so much work in this house that we are trying to do that it is just, I guess it's a good thing we're not a bunch of gamers or we would have no time for any of this stuff. Okay, 38. And there was also an inscription written over him in the letters of Yawanite and Roman and Ebri. This is the sovereign of the Yahudim. And one of the evildoers who were hanged was speaking evil of him, saying, If you are Hamashiach, save yourself and us. But the other, responding, rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear Elohim, since you are under the same judgment? And we, indeed, rightly so, for we receive the due reward for our, of our deeds. But this one has done no wrong. And he said to Yahushua, Adonai, remember me when you come into your reign. And Yahushua said to him, 
truly, I say to you today, you shall be with me in paradise. And it was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over all the land until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the Michigan was torn in two. And crying out with a loud voice, Yahushua said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. And the captain, seeing what took pla place, praised Elohim, saying, Truly this man was righteous. And when all the crowds who had gathered to that sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. Okay, why do you think they beat their breasts and went so away? guilt. They just figured out that uh, Yahushua was and, righteous and that they just killed the son of the Most High. Yeah, do you, you think they really cared? You, I mean, what, what do you think? I, I mean, mean, in the other Gospels, they saw the earthquake, they saw the veil rip, they saw a whole bunch of stuff happen, so... They they, do they, were they convicted at this point? They, were, they, were something, they figured something was up with this dude at this point, like this dude was someone special that they should not have killed. Right, and um, did we already hear... Uh, he breathed his last. Did it already say... Did I read this earlier? Yeah. It, it, it was dark from... from yeah, no, this is, uh, I don't think Okay, it's so it's coming in this chapter then, because I, I did read this this morning, but I missed all these, these things. Okay, 49. And all those who knew him and the women who followed him from Galileo stood at a distance watching this. And see, a man named Yosef, a council member, a good and righteous man. He was not agreeing with their council, indeed, from Ram Ramathian, a city of the Yahudim, who himself was also waiting for the reign of Elohim. He's not wailing for the reign of Elohim. He's waiting. You already read about the ninth hour in the Michigan being... Yeah, coming. but I'm just saying we have a typo. Oh. 51. He's not wailing for the reign of Elohim. He might be, but he's waiting, right? Everyone here? Yeah. Yep. We got this? I see it. Huh? Did you just say willing or waiting? Waiting. Waiting. Yeah, we, we, he wouldn't be wailing for the reign of Elohim. He would be waiting. Okay, 52. He going to Pilatus asked for the body of Yahushua and taking it down, he wrapped it in linen and laid it in a tomb hewn out of the rock where no one was yet laid. And it was preparation day and the Sabbath was approaching. And the woman, women who had come with him from Galil followed after and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. And having returned, they prepared spices and perfumes and they rested on the Shabbat according to the command. You think that was a very uh, good Shabbat they had? You think that was a really just a rough Shabbat? I don't think they would have rested much on that day. Would have been After, horrible, man. Yeah, they would have just, they wouldn't have. When our cows die, do we have a good Shabbat? No. When something bad happens and, and tremendous, do we have a... I just don't think, like, where so they rested, they probably didn't get much rest. Well, they, they, probably... they rested according to the commandment, right? You're not working, right? But as far as being content, as far as being peaceful, as far as, as your heart not being ripped out of your chest and you don't know why and I mean you do know why right the, the love of your life has been ripped away from you and our Messiah has been killed in front of us the king of Yashrael has been ripped apart so all right everybody I guess that is it thank you guys very very much much love to everybody out there we will do a better job as a family here to get this proofread prior to this my apologies for these typos in this um, we will hopefully not have this again so thank you guys very very much all right Shalom, Shalom, everybody.